Now let's talk about viewing your XML documents. Now again, and I'll say this a million times during this course, what you do with XML totally depends on what you're doing and how XML is going to work into that situation. But I do want to talk a couple of minutes here about how you view your XML data. And there's a lot of ways to do it, but for the most part, you're going to use a browser to see what you have. You may use one of those XML editors we talked about, but notice I've just got a sample XML file here. Pretty straightforward. The root is people, and then I've got some husband information, then I've got some wife information in here. So I'll close that. That's in Notepad. If I double click it, I'm opening an Internet Explorer. Now, Internet Explorer pretty much hands it back to me the way it is. Now, here's the thing you need to understand. You will seldom use or look at or consume XML data like this. You may open it in a browser just to see what you have, but and we're going to talk about this later on in the course, you will usually use cascading style sheets or XSLT to transform this into something else. Later you'll use XSLFO, but not for the most part, not right now. So that's an Internet Explorer. Now notice that if I come out here and right click and say open with, and I will go out and choose for example, well, I can use the XML editor. Oh, wait a minute, that's my default XML editor, excuse me. Let me choose another program here. Notice Avant browser. And let me say, okay, I don't want to donate. Notice in Avant, same way, looks very similar. And this is not really going to shock you here. Let me go show you if I open it in Firefox, what do we get? So as you can see, the data can easily be seen, but again, most people will just want to open it. Now notice in Firefox, it looks a little bit differently, and Firefox is telling me it doesn't appear to have any style information associated, and they're showing me the document tree here. So again, what you do with XML will depend on what you need to do with XML, and we'll talk about it as we go through the course, but I just wanted you to know that for the most part, viewing XML, either Notepad or the browser is going to give you what you need to get it to the next step. Now in the upcoming videos here, the next few, we're going to talk about the different pieces and parts of your XML data and documents. Now in the next couple of three videos, we're going to talk about the various pieces and parts of an XML file. And the first one up that we're going to talk about is the element. Now what exactly is an element? and make sure you get this distinction here. An element is right here. An element is a complete description of a piece of data, if you want to think of it that way. Now, the element consists of the start tag, the data, and the end tag. Notice the wording I'm using there. This is a tag. This is also a tag. This is the start tag and this is the end tag. Now, the data inside here, mark in this instance, is the content of this element. Once again, this is the element, this is a tag, and this is the content of the element. That'll come back to you later on in XML when you're trying to program against this stuff. Now, there is something else that you need to know about the tag syntax. It is possible to have empty elements. Now we don't have any in this, but I just want to show you an example down here in some of the white space, which also points out I can have white space inside my content, and for the most part, sometimes, how do you like that, for the most part sometimes, and that's the XML world, different parsers will, may treat it differently, and browsers for sure will treat it differently. They tend to take white space out. Now if it's in between words, like this, it would represent that. But let's talk about empty elements. And again, there's going to be two words here when we deal with empty elements. First up, an empty element would be like, if you remember in HTML, a line break. We put it like that in HTML and we leave it alone and it works. That's a problem in XML because there's no closing tag. So in XML, we would have to say, like that to open it and close it. Now you're saying when will we use that in XML? We'll use it in XSLT later, but I want you to know about these closing tags now. So that's an empty element. That's an element with no content, and this is where the content would go. We can put a shortcut on this, and XML will allow this, and if we if we put BR, then the slash, and then close it, 
that's legal. That's telling the XML parsers, hey, this is the start and the ending tag for this empty element. So elements are what are going to contain our data. And elements can be a lot of different things. This is an element, this is an element, and this is an element, right? Because the husband element contains name and age. And this is actually kind of the marriage between relational and hierarchical data. If this were a database, these might be columns and rows and so forth. But in, H in, in XML, we can maintain it and write it hierarchically here with nesting. So that's elements. Remember, you got elements, tags, content, then you have empty elements. Now let's talk about the one thing that sets HTML people to fighting. Let's talk about an attribute. Now, an attribute is another way of storing data in an XML document. Let me show you an example. Notice on this husband tag. It's clear here that a husband has a name and an age in this document. This one's Mark and age 45. Now, what if I wanted to put in here if this person was employed? Now, this is where the fight comes in on attributes because I can put inside the start tag. Notice just the start tag. I can put, whoop, if I can type, employed equals yes that is legal we get down here on Matt and let's say that Matt's not employed right now okay you see what we're doing we're putting data in an attribute now just like this tag I can create my own tags in XML I can also create my own attributes the attributes must have an equal sign, and it's up to you if you put white space in here. Some people like to put white space. An editor like VB, VB.net, will put white space in here for you. Up to you to put that in or leave it out. Now, here's the deal. You must have either double or single quotes around every one of these. Again, in HTML, you didn't have to have any quotes around it. It would just figure it out. Pretty much the standard, most everybody uses double quotes. So just to kind of stay compliant, I would suggest using double quotes. Now, here's the big fight. Just like I put employed as an attribute in here, notice I could have just as easily have done this. I could have come down here and created an employed tag. Right? Now, if you put a bunch of XML people in a room and you ask them which one of these is better showing the data in an element actually showing content between two tags or putting that data as an attribute now there's two types of people out there okay just like we drive Fords, Chevys, there's Democrats, Republicans there are people who like attributes and people who detest attributes for the most part people say they're easier it makes the document easier to read like this where everything that, that is data is represented as data. The general rule out there is you should only use attributes that are metadata, that describe the husband in a way that is not really content. Now, that's just a, an issue of semantics because the next question quickly becomes, okay, well then wait a minute, clown. When is it metadata or when is it data that we should use? This is totally up to you. If you're designing your own XML vocabulary, your own XML documents, it's up to you. We can access the attributes in the XML tree programmatically fairly easily. It's, it's not a big deal. We can access them just like we can the uh, actual data payloads in there, but it's up to you. Okay, so decide how you want to use attributes, but you need to know what attributes are. So you can also from time to time see empty tags with attributes in them. So for now, put attributes into your brain and we'll come back to them a little bit later on as we deal with other issues, especially in XSLT. Now continuing as we look at the various pieces and parts of an XML document, this is not going to take long, but let's talk about values. The values that we put in between our tags or the content just like the tags themselves can be whatever we need it to be. Now, general rule on content. Make one tag contain one piece of content. Mark, Mark Long, that's fine. Mark Long uh, is employed. 
you know, by acne uh, parts, whatever. This starts to be a problem now, right? Because we actually have three pieces of information in this content. We've got my name, we've got the fact that I'm employed, is employed, and we've got where I'm employed, Acme Parts. This starts to be a problem on parsing this, and it's going to be a, another issue with actually using this data. So again, on the data, make sure the data represents only one piece of information. Now, text or numbers, we don't care. We'll put it in here, we'll deal with it later, and we'll talk about it in later videos. But for the most part, understand that you're pretty much free to design this, and this is the beauty of XML. I've got my data here, and the data is self-describing because of the tags that I'm able to choose. So we'll expand on that a little bit later on in the course as well.